Welcome back everyone, Jose21 Crisis here and today, guess what, we're playing some more Grand Prix World 2001, this is the 2003 season, I know that makes a lot of sense, I understand. So, what happened in the previous episode, we had a couple of good races, we had the Spanish and Monaco Grand Prix, in Spain we had Alonso DNF because it was an engine failure, yeah the Renault letting us down, but Bernoulli scored a decent fourth place, was catching, no, I don't think he was catching Coulthard, he was close to Coulthard, but he wasn't catching. And in Monaco, we got a double points finish with Alonso 5th and Bernoulli 7th, Alonso notably holding up Barrichello throughout the entirety of his final stint. So far, so good, we've been scoring some points, we have 36 points to our name, while the top two teams, that's Ferrari and McLaren, 76 points, ahead of Williams and Benetton, who are better than us. And also ahead of VAR, who, at least according to the performance chart, which I should show you the performance chart right away, we were as good as VAR from the Spanish Grand Prix onwards. Now, I do not know how it looks like after Monaco, so Canada and France, I am not aware of how it looks, but, I mean... We're getting close to them. I think only Ferrari and McLaren brought upgrades up to this point. For Canada, I'm not sure. I'm making the graph after the race, and since I'm not doing the blocks anymore, I have to show it to you right now. So here's the chart. Um, Editor me is like the only one that has seen it so far. Me, I have not. But anyway, uh, and in the driver standings, Alonso is fifth with 20 points, and Bernoldi is sixth, tied for six with 16 points, which is a pretty solid result. Right now, Crichton is leading the championship from DeMichael and Fisi. Pretty big gap from, from, from Coulthard to Alonso, but as rightly pointed out by Ace Yuljoni, um, this right here, this is very much a salvageable gap. We are in the fight for this championship. It will really depend on how good the car performs after and during Silverstone, uh, maybe you don't know, but in my blog, I actually run a Tyrrell series, which I made a typo on it, and, and that became a signature of that of that series. But in our first very good year, in our first championship year, if I remember correctly, we started performing excellently in Silverstone, and then our season turned around. So the, the the, the breaking point, the big important point, it's gonna be Silverstone and whenever we can execute there. But for now, we have 4.6 in the bank. We have Panis and Alonso signed up and I'm gonna turn Alonso into an actual, uh, not a paid driver, but an actual driver that we pay cash. Some changes over here. I definitely need to start moving people uh, the correct way. Even if the 2004 car is not as good as we'd wanted because uh, Duran and Rinland, the 2005 car, it's gonna be awesome. But anyway, we're not here for 2005 or 2004, we are here for 2003. So, we're working on this airbox, we're working on the hydraulics, we're working on reliability, and let me transfer a few points because this is excessive to active suspension. Good, okay. Uh, what are we doing here? We're talking with Loctite and Norto. It's been a while since I entered here. Okay, yeah, we need we need these work steels. And I think I mentioned that we will be able to get that work steel after France if everything goes right. And I certainly hope everything does go right. But this is Grand Prix World. We know not everything goes right. For this race, I'm gonna give Alonso the hearts and Bernoldi the softs. And one dust, one heat. Let me check our engine. It should be fine. I'm gonna carry these three points all the way to. What's the name of the track? How can I forget? To Manicore to be able to have better performance in Manicore. Check something. Okay, we do have that research. Okay, good. I want to have some decent performance in Manico because, well, home track, we, we, we should be performing good there, right? Right. In me. Actually, since this is qualifying, let's put it at 10. And also here at 10. 
everything at 10, because it's qualifying, and we gotta execute well. This at 10 too, like, unless we're overheating, I'm not lowering that. And I will explain something I recently learned by testing, which, you know, might make us faster and might uh, take down a claim that I did that the lowest acceleration always gives you the best race pace. Anyway, let's get in there. Right, the Canadian Grand Prix, the assembly is fine. You qualify in your race. Okay, it's gonna be dry conditions and high wind speed. That will be perfectly fine. Hard and soft, I can confirm that's what I selected. And three laps of fuel, set one. Okay, we're ready to go. We're ready to go, so let's get in there. So it looks like McLaren either brought up grades or finally got their head in the game properly. They lock out the front row. Of course, it is cool tar who has the pole, but, but, just two tenths away from cool tar, two and a half tenths, quarter of a second. You know what I mean. It's Enrique Bernoldi on the soft tires. Solid qualifying run ahead of both Ferraris and then in sixth. Seven tenths away, but you know, if we compare ourselves to Weber, it's just half a second. Four tenths to Fizzy and two tenths to the Michael. You have Fernando Alonso in the hard tires, so we definitely are the third team, despite the performance chart saying otherwise. Like the, the performance chart always says we're considerably worse than we actually are. Um, for whatever reason, the teams, the AI teams, don't run to their true speed. I do not know why. That's probably because they don't optimize the order, the, the driver orders. Anyway, right behind is De La Rosa and Panis, our future number one driver. Then we have Barrichello and Montoya, Saracen, and um, Raikkonen, Williams and BAR tussling with each other. Arrows, Sauber, Jordan, Jordan, Sauber, Minardi, and Jaguar are the rest of the people. Jaguar just just terrible, absolutely terrible. So, 22 degrees, low wind speed, dry conditions. Everything looking good so far. Now, strategy. For strategy, I'm going to give Bernoldi this. He's going to go all the way to lap 28 and 56. Then he's going to have a very, very short 13 lap stint. And the reason for this, let me six, uh, 5, 6, and 7, because 4 we used in qualifying. The reason for this is that on very short stints, in this case, a 13 lap stint, I can have the driver push, like use six or 10 acceleration, and he will be faster than, you should, than using one. This is the case with very short stints on the soft tire. On the hard tire, it's a bit different. I'm gonna give Alonso a stop in lap 40. 40, and then 29 more laps to the end of the race. In the hard tires case, the threshold is between 20 to 35 laps, depending on tire wear and so on, and the track and so on and so forth. In the case of this race, it is at 30. So if he has to do a 30 lap stint, he will be better served going for it at 10 or 6 acceleration instead of 1. Because the tire wear you accrue on such a stint is not enough to knock off the effect of the extra acceleration. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have a very short pushing stint for Bernoldi, 13 laps, just initial saving stints. And for Alonso, it's going to be 40 and 29. So a pushing stint that is after a saving stint. So I think we're ready to go here. So let's get in there. Of course, do the usual, save the game. Drop this to 10, uh, uh, 100 percent. Drop it. Drop it. Good. Okay, I'm not going to change a single order so far, and I'm gonna tell them what to do because I found increased success when I don't tell them anything right after the race. I can modify stuff later, but not now. Let's see. Okay, we hold a position. Now Bernoldi gets sent to the shadow realm because why wouldn't he? Alonso sixth. He will have gained a place, but he didn't. I, at times I don't get why we lose so many places, especially Bernoldi who was on the soft tire and was on a fairly light fuel line. I mean, 28 is not a light fuel load. and he's losing places, so that's not ideal. Let's begin to push, 
and let's drop the acceleration because we do not need that much acceleration. Not ideal start for Enrique and not ideal start for Alonso, who is dropping places right now. Should be defending those positions better, but he isn't. Uh, let's drop this so that we don't burn the tires. Remember, this is the saving seat. We cannot, like, go out there and burn the tires. It's just not, not, not what we do. I need Enrique. I need uh, uh, Alonso. Let Enrique through. No, that's not what he asked. Ronaldo, come on. Yeah, absolute disaster of a race start. Absolute disaster. We need to get past that Williams too. We're definitely faster. Maybe we aren't. Maybe we're not faster than that Williams. Alonso, could you please let Bernoldi go? He's on the soft. Come on. Please, man. Thank you. That took us way too long. And now Bernoldi's moving up. He was moving up. Drop that freaking please. Okay. Okay. Very terrible race start. We're now in the in the midfield which is not good. If there's any positive to this, is that we have a very long set of, of stints, like Alonso's going to the 40 and Bernaldi's going to the 28, so it is a long uh, two-stopper and a long one-stopper, so if we can climb up places, it will be through strategy, but this is not what I expected. I expected to be around here. Maybe not fighting with Ferrari and McLaren, but not dropping to, you know, the depths of hell. Not ideal. So we're coming up on Bernoldi's pit stop lap, and things have been interesting. Uh, first of all, you might have noticed something different with my mic throughout all this time. That's because I commandeered a table, put a box on top of that, and put my phone on top of that, which is what serves as my microphone. So you might not hear the, 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 the clicks of my mouse or the movement of my mouse this time around, mostly because uh, the, phone, the, the mic, which is a phone, is in a different place now. Second, uh, Bernal is coming in. Third, uh, cool car, oh my god, have been having a titanic fight for the last 20 or so laps, 28 laps to be specific. Clean stop from Bernal, for Bernaldi, let's go. They just, just, just absolute dog fight they had that right there. There, it's like Michael leads, then uh, Coulter leads, then Michael leads again, then Coulter leads again. It's been awesome. Also, Bernoldi, you are free to push on those tires because we need to get past that people. We were far behind the Benettons and and the other Ferrari and the other McLaren, but now we're very, very close. We were behind Barrichello. Let that sink in. Coulter's gonna win this race now. Michael pinning right now means that Coulter is gonna win the race. Unless it DNFs, of course, but that's exactly what Ferrari did not have to do. Exactly what they did not have to do. Okay, I was hoping Alonso was going to be ahead, but no, no, he wasn't. I can leave Bernoulli on the full braking for, for extra lap, but after this, uh, on this lap, I have to switch it back so that he continues saving tires. Alonso decided to overheat his tires for some reason. I do not understand it, but he's over here in his tires. He's still gonna make it to lap 40 with no big issue whatsoever, but I'd rather he didn't so that we had a bit more pace. If anything, Michael Schumacher has the fastest lap of the race right now. Um, very close to Coulthard, so it's not like there's a big significant difference. I think Alonso is catching him, but I'm not completely sure. Okay, Bernoldi, just save the save these tires. We need to make it to lap 56, and then we're going to give you full reign of being able to use those tires. Uh, the, the fresh set of tires we're gonna give you to eat up everyone. Okay, um, seventh fastest lap. That's not bad. Although one second slower than the Michael, so it's not great, I say. Also, his fastest lap was just on lap 6. Alonso is on lap 30. That's an issue. Anyway, I'll see you later. I'll do the half race report when uh, Alonso picks. Right, so it is Alonso's pit stop lap, so it means it is time for our half race report. So, I made a mistake. It is actually next lap that is Alonso's pit lap, but anyway, let's do the half race report. 
Right away, David Coulthard leads. He just took the lead from Michael Schumacher. Behind he has Fernando Alonso. Then you have Mark Webber, Giancarlo Fisichella, Kimi Raikkonen putting some damn good pace. Pedro Dalla Rosa and Enrique Bernoldi, in theory, right now will get a single solitary point. Good for him. And then we have Panis and then whoever the else. Uh, the VARs of Montoya and Saras, and then you have Marquez. That's everyone that I think it's relevant. Fernando's finally gonna get out of those tires. Let me increase that so that he actually does the thing I'm, I'm supposed to make him do. It was a clean stop. Good. So, Fernando is gonna be able to push the entirety of this final 29 lap stint and he's gonna have no issues about that. Good, okay. And the, and the engine's not gonna overheat either, so everything is perfect. Meanwhile, I think Michael needs to be able to get through from Coulthard, otherwise he's not gonna win this race because Coulthard is absolutely on a one-stop. Remember when he pit? I think it was on lap 33 or something? But, yeah, Michael needs to get through. Meanwhile, Bernoldi is here trapped in 7th behind uh, De La Rosa. De La Rosa. And Raikkonen over here managed to put down some amazing pace to get past both. I don't know, he, but you know, he's all the way over here. So, solid from him. Right now, we're looking at something like a podium for Alonso, if we're lucky. And... A fifth or sixth for Bernoldi. But it will depend. It requires us to be lucky. And that Bernoldi. Uh, Bernoldi. That Alonso holds on to some pace. Here in the close. Here on the, on the middle stints. Because he absolutely needs to. Like, he's not gonna beat these boys if he does not uh, keep pace up. And that's the, entire of, the entirety of the reason why I have him, like, Pushing like crazy, so that I overfilled him, by the way. Uh, he had an extra lap of fuel, I should have brought this down by one, or make him beat on lap 41, but it's too late. Meanwhile, Bernoldi, I think he can go one more lap and then be able to push even harder, but it, it's fine. Matt's again at the NFs, that's a, that's a very sad thing for him. But well, the point is, there's maybe a, po a podium here in this race, or at the very least, there's gonna be like fifth and sixth, something like that. Anyway, I'll see you later, probably when Bernoldi himself pits. Okay, why? Okay, Bo Jordan just had, bra just had brakes issues, which very normal thing in this racetrack. Updates, we got some updates. It is raining, which is not good for us. Not exactly good, let me tell you. So Weber pit and Raikkonen pit, and that probably, no, that absolutely means Alonso is gonna finish ahead of him if he can contain him, which might be a bit difficult. Just a tiny bit difficult. And uh, Bernoldi might also finish ahead if he can, actually he has 10 laps to put a gap to him, and he has Alonso to cover him, so he can probably finish ahead of Weber. Now the question is, when is Fisichella coming into pit? I'm not sure, but the big news here is that it is raining. And that even despite the fact that he's heavy with fuel, Coulthard is very, very fast. Two things coming up right here. First, Bernoldi is going to come in for his stop and I'm gonna increase his acceleration to six. I moved it, his pit stop lap by one lap because I had an extra lap of fuel. Also, those stars are really dead, so he needs to switch them. And right now, Alonso is coming up, in, up, coming up to traffic, and I absolutely do not want him to let Weber go while going through the traffic, because, you know, it's a potential podium right here, so I just don't want to lose the position. It will be terrible, and I don't want that. So, Bernoldi into the pits. Uh, it's it's fine. I'm gonna let him burn out the the, 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 the brakes and, and everything in between. It's fine. The rain has stopped. That's unfortunate, but uh, not much I can do about that. Where is Bernoldi? There he is. Hello, Enrique. Okay, he is ahead of Raikkonen, but behind Fisichella. He could potentially have the pace to catch up to Fisi, 
We'll see if the soft tire can actually hold on that far. I think it can, but I'm not sure. At the same time, Alonso is still going through traffic, so let me lower that because we don't we don't always need to push that hard. And finally, I think I made a mistake regarding Michael Schumacher. Let me check the pit stops. Please. Michael's, lap, uh, Michael's pit stop was very long, 13 seconds. That could be either a mistake or the fact that he went for a one-stop well. So it was always a fight between Coulthard and Michael. I called him out for making him go on a two-stop, but it was only an early two-stop. And right now, it's clearly that it's clear to all of us to see that the strategy indeed worked. So, good job, Ferrari. You might be back into the championship. You might be back into this thing. In the meantime, we are looking... We are set to be on the podium for this race, thanks to Alonso, which means we're in this fight. We're very much in this fight. In the end, it was about who was in the right position at the right time, and right now, it is David Coulthard in the lead of this race and very close to winning the Canadian Grand Prix. Third is Fernando Alonso. Third, ahead of Mark Webber and Giancarlo Fisichella. Bernoldi did not have the pace to catch up to Bernoldi, but he does have enough pace to hold up Kimi Raikkonen in the superior Williams. And behind them, very, very far behind in the final point Spain position, is Oliver Panis over here, just getting across the start finish line. And David Coulthard is going to win the Canadian Grand Prix. It was an awesome fight from those two fools. But in the end, it was the square head man that got it. And over here, in your screens right now, Fernando Alonso scoring another podium for our cause. That's going to be six very, very juicy points that we are absolutely thankful for. And Bernoldi is going to come up here and give us four more points. Just... 10 points overall in the weekend, that's that's pretty much a win. That's very much if Alonso had won a race. Not as good, because it's not, it does not go as a win in the stat sheet, but it's a podium, so we'll finish. What more could you ask? Solid day overall. E3 in this race, just absolutely good work. Confirmation, David Coulthard from Michael Schumacher, Fernando Alonso completes the podium. Then you have Weber, Fisichella, Bernoulli, Raikkonen and Panis. Everyone else is a lap down. Della Rosa, unfortunately, he was going to be the Benetton that scored points, but breaks issue. It was complete. it was very much reminiscent of the 99 uh, Frensen crash. In this very track where his brakes just gave up, he DNF in the same place. So, Coulthard now extends his lead to 8 points over the Michael, then you have Fisichella with 38, Weber with 33, Alonso has 26 points and Bernoldi breaks the tie with Barrichello, now he's well entrenched in 6th position. Barrichello has 16 points and here is the rest of the boys. And he's doing decently, it's in my best interest that he does poorly. So that when he comes to the team, he actually improves. Well, is that only with staff? I think it's only with staff that if they come from a worse team to a better team, they improve. But I think with Panis, he needs to have a good year, which is he's not exactly happy. But anyway, Frost has 41 point, uh, 45 points. McLaren take a three point lead over Ferrari. And that's a very significant gap. It's going to be possible to close it I hope but we're going to have to get a ton of one two finishes and we're not getting those just yet so we made a slight loss it's no big deal yeah I had uh, someone from I don't know who I fired unfair dismissal but we just had to pay a bit it's it, it's fine she'll use research we will use research do not worry that is usual. We got Marlboro as a team sponsor, which is gonna give us a hell of a lot of cash. Renault, Blocky Strike increases support. Elf, LG. The Traders at Nortel. Michelin, 
That was quick. Okay. Prost, the French team, is gonna sign a works deal with Michelin, the French tire supplier. Nationalism. Anyway, uh, Paramalat is going, 555 is not going that well. Licensing, I don't care about law licensing. Good. So, the, are we actually doing better than last year? I already forgot how many points we got last year. Then again, last year was a... Two, with the 2002 points, is, yeah, four points more than last year, so... To be expected, go to the team. The news. So, we got that team sponsorship deal with Marlboro. DC, Paul and Win. Bernoldi got three points. Three points. Four points. Whatever, man. The amount of points that you get from sixth. And Alonso got six points for that third place finish. And Ortel betrayed us. Process going to partnership with Reynolds. I will have wanted a work steal, but Reynolds doesn't offer those, sadly. Everyone was going to score more points, I mean. It's the 2003 point system, everyone scores more points. Okay, everything is fine. We're ranked pretty highly for whatever reason. Fourth in the manager ranking and third in the FIA ranking. That's pretty solid. Okay, let's sign some deals. Let's sign that Michelin deal. Welcome to the team, Michelin. And now, everything we need to do is just sign three cash sponsors. 555 has not moved. Parmalat is in progress. 555 has not moved. Parmalat is in progress. It would be logical, logical that we sign Katia because they are owned by the Salt who is very French. So we're gonna look into Katia. I will put the correct amount later. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Lucky Strike is happy. Michelin, we gotta make them happier because, you know, they sign with us. We, we, we should make them happy. Also, we're gonna keep talking to Nortel even though they betrayed us. We shouldn't, but we will. Now, the setup points. The setup points are going to come here to heat. The reason for that is in this track, you normally cannot push the engine, no matter what you do. So you just put, the heat, the, put on the heat points, and then you can do it. So there's that. All right. So, we immediately proceed to build the new airbox, which is absolutely necessary. Like, it, 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 it has to come on the car. How much do we have to repair? Amazingly, not that much. But we're gonna have enough to just fabricate the spares. Just three spare parts. Could we do with two? I think we can do with just two spare parts. And we can build traction control for extra... What's the term I'm looking here? For extra tire conservation, there we go. Now, engineering. I need better engineers, so this is gonna have to completely move. So, two here, two here. I need to be able to build more spare parts. It's clear our current capacity is not enough. So just, just, just gotta start moving people up. It's like it's a thing in life. Same here, like, we're a good team. We are getting a ton of cash. We absolutely need a better personnel. And that's exactly what I'm planning to do. Accept that. Uh, design. I don't quite need it in design. So I'm gonna leave that as is. Commercial, I can definitely use better personnel. There we go. And we have the cash, so we can tank a few redundancies. Uh, cannot send improved design until we build this improved throttle. So, this project is stuck as is. The driving aids, they, 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 they will be fine. Uh, anything else we have to do here? No one has brought anything interesting, which is a shame. Put the traction control on the car. Save the game. And now... What we'll do is do the testing as usual, try to damage the car the least as possible, and come back. Let's see what happens. 
save the game again. I'm very paranoid regarding to that. What happens when you live in a country with electricity problems? In the long run, I was well justified to be paranoid because electricity decided to conk out like 10 minutes ago. It's back now, obviously, but all my saving served a purpose. Anyway, um, did my testing. The program was 25, 10, 42, 119 laps. These uh, programs for each driver, we got full setup, development, and research, and man managed to completely fix car number one and car number uh, four. Those will be the race cars. So, our issue right now is oversteering slow corners, which is actually a very good thing, because the only slow track we're running into is Manicore, and this issue is easily fixable with just a single setup point. So we're working on fixing that, and we're working on active suspension. That's pretty much everything that can be said about this. Uh, what else? Uh, so I distributed the points correctly, so it will be 21 on 555. I'd rather put more, but I can't because I have to put 64 on Parmalat and 8 on Katia so that we're able to talk to them. Soon enough, I have to start negotiating with this so I'm able to uh, affect the tires, like being able to develop them. And same with the engine, so I'm able to adjust it because I'm pretty sure the engine Benetton has right, uh, Renault has right now, it's, I mean, it's pretty good. Solid, pa uh, solid everything except power, but it can be better. I can make a very good qualifying engine out of this thing. And maybe even a race engine. Like, in this game, reliability, when you have automatic gears, it's just a stat that you don't need anymore. Um, setup is going to be soft tires from both. We're gonna be running three stops. I'm gonna be... gonna be a bit risky with this one. Um, strategy wise for both uh, setup wise for both it's like the heat points I brought then dust and speed the speed point is important because it turns this into a high speed track and the dust so we can overtake people remember we're three stopping and this is going to of course move all the way up uh, actually move that down because we're qualifying again this all the way up and the good thing about the heat points is gonna let us push the car during the qualifying session. Right? That's good. Good, good, good. Everything around here is good. Let's go and announce to the world that we're gonna be signing Michelin and let's get in there. Our home race now. Can we do good here? It's gonna be very dry, 29 degrees, wind speed is average. Okay, remember, we're looking to three stop and we're looking to be able to have a strategy that lets us push the tires as much as possible. I think I have one in mind, but we'll see how it goes. David Coulthard by 31 milliseconds beats Fernando Alonso to pole. 31 milliseconds. We had that until DC made his final run. <laughs> It was there. It was there. This tells us we're fast, but it doesn't tell us much at the same time because soft tires. Also, Bernoulli's over here in six, half a second away, so maybe this is just Alonso being Alonso, but you know, Sigma Alonso did his best. Anyway, Michael Schumacher is third, which sounds familiar. Weber is 4th, Barrichello is 5th, of course Bernoulli is 6th, then we have Physical at 7th, I don't know what was Physical at doing, De La Rosa 8th, Raikkonen in 9th, and Montoya 10th, Saracen 11th, and Panis 12th. Panis though, <clears throat> not having a good race, not having a good qualifying. Here's the rest of them. You might have noticed here that I only did uh, 9 laps, that's 3 runs, and the reason for that is that, well, I was planning to do a three stop, but throughout the session I remembered that well, three stop doesn't work in France. Like it's just disgustingly bad. So we're not gonna do that. Instead, we're gonna be running a two stop. 
which I absolutely know we can run. <clears throat> Bernoldi is going to run a bit of a traditional three stop, a uh, two stop, I mean, about there. 27, 27, 18. And Alonso is going to run it a bit longer. He's going to run it 30, 60, 12. And the reason for the 12 is that my original plan was to have them push in the final stint or even the initial stint. Instead, with this configuration here, I have Alonso saving on the first two stints and then push hard on the final stint. Bernoldi, I think, will do the same, but it's overall slower. But he's still going to do it. So, yeah, I sent the plan to do the tree stop by the wayside because, like, you know, every single warning sign in my head told me that's a bad idea. So I decided that's a bad idea. So, boys and girls, let's get in there. See what we can do. What we can do is save the game. Lower race speed and show you very quickly the driver orders I have because I changed things up. Trying to give them a better race start, I tried to I tried to have them be a bit more conservative on everything, but the race started itself. We'll see if it works. I'm not gonna give it any order yet. Let's see. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Like, it, 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 it absolutely doesn't matter what kind of orders you give. They just get sent to the Shadow Realm. You know what? I'm not gonna take that. I'm going to I'm going to experiment a bit because that's kind of BS that they just get sent to the Shadow Realm. <clears throat> so we're gonna do a bit of experimenting here. It, it 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 does upset me that I have to do this, but at times this game does not make sense. So let's go back. And let's lower braking to five. Just to see what happens on this race start. Let's check. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, and, you know, they lose a position. Okay, okay, that's what I'm going to do now. I'm, not go I'm going to keep uh, braking lower. It's fine, okay. Increase every order to the place it is supposed to be, and start uh, blocking you to get, get a move on. Maybe I didn't lower Bernoldi. Ah, it's fine. It's fine. What's going on here? We are fourth. By this point, I thought we would be well ahead, but no. Why is this at 150% still? I thought I moved it to 100. Oh, but I did not say it before that. Okay, it's fine. Okay, fourth place for Alonso, 12th place for Bernoldi. It could have been better, but it also could have been much worse, as you could see on the original attempt. But remember, we're not too stop. We're running a very conservative strat. Let's lower that and that and have him push. And let's lower that and that and have him block and push. And now that Bernoldi has crossed the line, let's increase braking and let's have the same with Alonso. And let's... So far, things have... Uh, things are looking good. We're well in position to get a few points with Alonso. I'm not sure we're not... I'm not sure we're that fast around here. I think the harder one stop would have been better, but I was so focused on running a three stop that I did not look that far. Need to keep an eye on <clears throat> on Bernoldi. Okay, he made that position. Alonso, I think he's gonna be stuck to fourth. Ah, he made a mistake there. He lost position. Dang it. Okay, we should we should be fine. We should be fine. Bernoldi is gaining position. He should be eight eventually in the points. For now, it looks like Coulthard might win this race, and let's not burn the tires any more than they have to be. All right, let me cut the recording to um, Bernoldi's pit stop, and we'll see how everything turns out now. We are losing positions a lot, so that's not great. But anyway, I'll see you in a bit. So things have stabilized some in the form of the, the, the two-stopper speed and... Alonso has managed to keep some solid pace to be able to be P1, which is the position he rightfully deserved after that qualifying session. So yeah, 
uh, his P1, but Coulthard and Michael are very fast, and Fisichella and De La Rosa are probably one-stopping, so it's not like we're home free. It's not like it's not like we will be fine. I will add another lap of fuel, and the whole purpose of that, okay, De La Rosa is to stop it now. Is definitely to stop it now. There goes Bernoldi. The purpose of that extra lap of fuel I gave Bernoldi is that at the end of the stint, I'll be able to have him push instead of just saving every time. So in the final six laps, I can I can go increase pace. I can have him be a bit faster, and he should be fine. Where is Enrique? There he is. Start blocking. Okay. No, it's not the half race report, but I can tell you that Williams apparently brought upgrades because they uh, Barrichello was up here fighting with Michael and Weber for position, which is very significant for them. Uh, the only issue is that uh, Barrichello, his engine exploded, so gone. And among other things, I think Fisichella is going to win this race because he's one stopping unless he pits right here or in the next lap. Yeah, um, physical is two stopping, he is one stopping. And in this one, if the AI does it, it is completely overpowered and there's no way to stop it. So, <laughs> so congratulations Fisi on winning the, uh, the French Grand Prix. Yes, this is an attempt at a jinx. <laughs> what were you expecting? Alonso's pit stop time and he managed to clear some traffic really, really well. He also has an extra lap of fuel that I did not expect him to have. Could make him go longer, but instead I'm going to pit him here. And on the final stint, if he can go longer, I will have him go longer. So that the tire is not that destroyed when we, when we have the final stint, I can have him push and so on and so forth. He's going to lose P1. Uh, again, physical is gonna win this race, and that should be no doubt. But he should be just behind Weber and ahead of De La Rosa. There he is. Perfectly, everything is going as planned. Good. Good, good, good. I'm going to make the half race report in like lap 40. It's not half race, but more things will have happened. Like probably Fizzy will have paid by that point. So I'm gonna be able to make a proper report out of that one. So, cut to that. So, time for the health race report as Fisichella has finally, finally pitted. He pitted on lap 40, for crying out loud. He still leads the race, although he's gonna drop a few places back when uh, DC and Michael catch him, and then he's going to retake the lead after they pit. Fourth is Mark Webber with Alonso fifth, De La Rosa 6th, Enrique Bernaldi 7th, and Panis 8th, Panis recovering, recovering nicely. Then we have Montoya and Raul Schumacher 9th and 10th. Uh, let's see, where are they? So Panis is here, Montoya is here, they are not really a threat to us. Alonso is somewhat of a threat to Weber. De La Rosa might be an annoyance, but I don't think he's able to catch us. We're mostly a threat to Weber because of the fact we're gonna be able to pit very late and then push the car as much as we want. So that is covered there. But yeah, or in theory our highest position in this race is gonna be like a fourth. Unless there are DNFs at the front. Because I think we're gonna be able to beat Weber. Uh, that's very optimistic, but I'm pretty sure that can happen. As for Bernoldi, uh, the highest he can go is, uh, let's see, fifth, <clears throat> no, not fifth, sixth, if De La Rosa pits early and Bernoldi has enough time to pump in some very fast laps, overtake him and hold his position there. It's going to be difficult, but he can do it. The only one that I'm sure of is that we can finish fourth in this race, depending on on Weber's strategy and Alonso's pace, which so far has been very, very good. He's been heavier than Bernoldi, and he's been outlapping, outpacing him very, very hard. I, let, let's see the fastest laps, 19.8 by Alonso, a 20.2 by Bernoldi, four tenths faster on heavier fuel. 
part of that, of course, is the fact that uh, Bernoulli keeps setting his stars on fire for some disconcerting reason. Also, DC has finally caught to Fisichella. It's in our best interest that Fisi holds up there as long as he w both Ferraris made mistakes there. It's in our best interest that uh, Fisichella holds up there as long as he can because that slows down DC and Michael and there's a parallel universe where we finish second in this race or at least Alonso does and it would be nice if that one became the canon universe for us but you know gonna be gonna be a bit a, a bit difficult because you know well you know DC and Michael are fast Anyway, I'll see you later when pit stops st uh, start again. Okay, we successfully managed to extend Bernoldi's stint by two laps, which is a very, very good value. And now he's coming in. I'm going to have him. Hello, Raikkonen. Raikkonen is three stopping. Don't, don't, don't mind about him. I'm gonna have him uh, with six acceleration points and have him push the entirety of his final stint. As for Alonso, right now he's pushing. He has six acceleration points, so. He should increase his pace a bit towards the end of this stint and in the next stint. Right now, I need him to get through Fisichella because he's slowing us down. Fisichella is going to win this race, but at the same time, um, he's one stopping. The man's slow. I need him to get out of my way so I can run properly. Here's Weber, who beat not that long ago. There goes uh, Bernoulli. Come on, Alonso, you need to get through. Okay, Weber, 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 what happened with... Okay, he's killed Ishui trying to push. Good. <laughs> Good. Alonso to the lead, but that's not going to last long. But we're going to enjoy it as long as it happens. There he goes. He's seventh. He's behind uh, De La Rosa. Fifth is a legitimate position he could finish. If he has pace. That's the thing. He needs to have pace. As for Alonso, well... I'll see you in a bit when he himself has to... Okay, as Albert got out of our way, that's very much good, that's very appreciated. So I'll see you later. Alright, the time has come for Alonso's speed stop, like I mentioned before, 6 on acceleration because that helps him push. It's something weird, like uh, from 1 to 5, tire wear increases as you increase acceleration. On 6, the pace increases, but tire wear does not. And then from 7 to 8, tire wear keeps increasing so on six you get more pace for no extra tire wear compared to five so if you're going to use higher acceleration values use six just use six it's either one six or ten so there's that Alonso is coming in and we're gonna give the lead back to Fisichella who is absolutely going to win this race but now what about Alonso where will he come out respective to Coulthard and Michael this could be this could be second place it's going to be second place, man. We started here, we absolutely deserve to finish second after all this mess. And it could have been a win were it not for the fact that Physical is running a glitchy one-stop strategy. And you know what? Being able to beat the main title contenders? I highly rate that. I absolutely love that. Only thing he needs to do is just, you know, Finish the race, and precisely for that, I'm gonna lower care views by one so that uh, I calculate it so that they have enough stamina towards the end of the race. But I'm gonna lower that just in case, just in case I miscalculated, which I should not, I shouldn't have miscalculated, but gotta be paranoid to survive in Formula One. So there is that. Alonso is gonna be second. That was an absolutely, that's an amazingly fast stop. How fast was that? Where is it? There, just seven seconds. That's quick. Nine seconds. Nine seconds on his first stop, then seven, and for Bernoulli is what, 8.8, .8, and then seven. At some point I need to calculate, like, what will be the fastest uh, pit stop overall? Because, like, Look at these AIs, like, physical at 10 seconds, 9 seconds, 7, like, I want to calculate exactly how much fuel you need to have the fastest speed stops possible. 
it shouldn't be that hard to calculate that. Anyway, I'll see you later when the race is close to ending. That means when Physical enters his final lap because he's absolutely going to win. Boys, boys, listen up. Physical has DNF. Physical has DNF. Hydraulics issue. The one thing that stopped us, I think, was year one or year two. You know, the hydraulics conking out every time. The entire reason why we didn't run uh, Hungary. It came through for us. They blew up on Fizz's car, and that means Alonso is leading the French Grand Prix on a Prost Grand Prix car. That, 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 that was not that event that I expected. I did not expect to see, like, oh, yeah, physical at the NF, but. And now we lead the race. You know what? I, 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 need, this, I need this race to win right now because. If it happened to Fizzy, it could also happen to Bernoldi and Alonso, so I need this to end, like, now. Still seven laps to go, though, so... Hold on to your cocks. Ladies and gentlemen, Alonso has entered his final lap. Final lap of his race. Please, I don't know who are you, Ralph? Get, 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 get out of the way, please. Anyway, Alonso enters his final lap. He's leading the French Grand Prix on a Prost Grand Prix car. French car, French engine, French tires, French fuel. The only thing that's missing is a French driver, but I, I, I think we can forgive that thanks to the fact that it is Fernando Alonso. Thanks to a very lucky DNF from Fernando, uh, Fernando from Giancarlo Fisichella. You know, it's very convenient who it was. And some very good strategic work that put us ahead of the championship contenders. Fernando Alonso it's going to win the French Grand Prix for Prost Grand Prix. Ladies and gentlemen, Ace Shield was right. We are in the fight for this championship now. Our title fight starts today. David Coulthard finishes second with Michael Schumacher third. Fourth is going to be Pedro de la Rosa fifth. It's going to be Enrique Bernoulli. We'll have liked him to get him on the podium, but um, his race start did not allow for that kind of thing. Six is going to be our future driver, Oliver Panis. Then you have uh, Juan Montoya. Seventh and eighth is going to be Kimi Raikkonen, who was three stopping. And let me tell you, if we were three stopping, look where Raikkonen finished. Look at that man. He's just crossing the line. We will not have won this race if we went for a three stop. Even with the lucky physical at the NF, we would have been way back. So, very, very smart, very good thing that I went for a two-stop. Otherwise, it would have ended in tears. There's your confirmation. Alonso wins from Coulthard, Zemichael, Pedro de la Rosa, Bernoldi, Panis Montoya, and Raikkonen. Everyone else, I lap down the arrows. Solid performance. Uh, let's see. Uh, Alessi. Disappointing. He was way behind Marquez anyway. Barrichello. Solid performance in the Williams. It looks like they brought upgrades. Fisichella. Very, very unfortunate. Very... I was gonna say very 99 year old like, but on that one he crashed out on his own. So, no. I got to say... Arrows. Solid. And Benetton. I'm pretty sure they brought upgrades to this race. I have not seen the chart yet, so show it again just in case. Um, so I'm not sure if they brought upgrades, but if they did, they are sure to be working. Same with Williams, they also probably brought upgrades. Even though Raikkonen is not, it's not showing that kind of pace, uh, Rubens did until his engine blew up. So Coulthard takes a 10 point lead from the Michael, so he's not going to lose the championship lead if uh, he DNFs and Michael wins. Third is Fisichella, we overtake Weber, 36 to 33, it's a significant gap, it's a 30 point gap. Can we overhaul it? If we're lucky, we can. We can actually beat that. Uh, Bernoldi is 6 with 23 points. 10 points behind Weber, he, uh, Weber at the very least is catchable. Next up, overhauling Fisichella. We are 
pretty much planted in third place. McLaren take a five point lead over Ferrari. Uh, Williams and Benetton are tied for fourth with 24 points. There is the rest of the Minardi and Arrows in a typical Minardi versus Arrows fight. Overall, good weekend. Good, good weekend. And we made a profit of 1.2 million. Did I sell shares by any... Did, did I... I did not. So why why did we make that much cash? I guess transportation? Like transportation costs get, cost getting cut, but... That's... I mean... I mean, I know we have paid drivers, but it's, it's <laughs> it doesn't make sense. The only thing that could make sense is the fact that uh, the construction percentage here is way down from our season average. But still, it uh, I don't know why it increased this much. Maybe I'm just out of touch. Uh, testing, rebuild progress, problems. They're going, they're annoyed about testing. It's okay. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, just the usual, works deal with Michelin, PSN, Race, Parmalat, 555, we, uh, we're talking with Katia, I'm gonna sign them in a moment, uh, if possible, in a moment I say, when it is next race that's going to happen. Uh, okay, let's see, Benetton, Lucky Strike, Alonso, yet another win. Right now his stats, how does his stats look like? Two wins, two fast slaps, no pole positions though. One of them will come this race. Uh, this race. This this season. He absolutely will have one win this season. Like it's it's something that will happen. DC led, Bernoulli fifth. Ferrari has the other work deals with uh, Michelin, so good luck we scoop that up. Pros is happy, Benetton is happy, McLaren lead the championship, Ferrari will be using elf fuel. DC fast as lap. Not much more. Why they are not calling me manager of the, of the month? I'm not sure. Why this is going down? I'm not sure. Remember, won a race against the top teams. FIA. All right. Uh, let's see what we can we can do here. Uh, let's see. Can we get active? We can get active. Good. Uh, 2003. That is approved. So let's continue. How many spares can I build? I could build six spares if I wanted to. I'm gonna build five of them, five spares, which I'm probably gonna use all of them. And build, no, 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 no. You will build five spare parts. You have the cash to do anything you want. And then uh, build the driving aid, even if it costs a bit more. Um, I need to keep shuffling these people because this is something I really slacked on, like the hiring of people because I didn't want to upset them because I wanted the morale to be high, but we are having solid performances, so we definitely have to start moving people up. Uh, let's see. You, 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 and you. Then I'll re uh, redistribute like the averages and stuff. Um, drop everyone there, then you, you, and one, two, three, you, and keep one average. Okay, good. Let's see, what else do we have here? We have that success advantage, which we can use on, we'll use it on Katia, we'll use it on 555, let's sign that Parmalat deal. This, go down to 1%. Okay, if I use it on 555, we quickly scoop up that deal. If I use it on Katia, we quickly get that deal as well. Which is more important? Absolutely the 555 deal because it's two seasons compared to the one from Katia. So something to grab up later. Um, Instead of talking to Nortul, who decided to betray us, let's talk with Elf and make them happy. Remember, they're the French uh, national fuel, so gonna make them happy. I don't think there's anything else to do on this one, but yeah, 
absolutely great weekend from us because uh, why? Win. 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 That's the entirety of the reason why this was a great weekend. I hope you enjoyed this particular episode. Uh, you know, the usual YouTuber stuff. Comment, like, subscribe, and support me on coffee if you really like that. Uh, you really want to do that stuff. Great weekend on this one, and I hope to see you on the next one where it's Britain. I told you, our season depends on Britain. If we win at Britain, we can make a true run at the championship. And I hope to see you there to know this, the, the, the future of our season. See you there.